just buy the new it. Spend a couple thousand just to cruise it. Shawty said she love me, but it's fresh and never prove it. I never tell her, but I put it in the music. Well, that's okay. All I wanna do is make the best of my whole day. Thank the Lord up above, get the cream on the side, make you laugh to know it. That's the stuff that I love, la, la, da, da, da. We can be friends if you wanna. We can just talk if you wanna. We can all hands if you wanna. Hey, tell me what you wanna do. We can just laugh if you Get the facts freaking straight, always on repeat, like We could be friends if you wanna We could just talk if you wanna We could hold hands if you wanna Hey, tell me what you wanna do We could just laugh if you wanna Late nights on the stars if you wanna We could just kiss if you wanna Hey, tell me what you wanna do really choppy with this uh connection i just got a text i just got a text message from a buddy that the internet was really choppy yeah it's like the the feed is not working very well like from me on the instagram or just on the uh no is uh, instagram is working great thank you guys for joining b-side sack we see you baby good good luck I didn't know it. Spend a couple thousand just to cruise it. Shawty said she love me, but it's fresh and never prove it. I never tell her, but I put it in the music. Well, that's okay. All I wanna do is make the best of my whole day. Thank the Lord up above, get the cream on the side, make you laugh to know it. That's the stuff that I love, la, la, da, da, da. We can be friends if you wanna. We can just talk if you wanna. We can all have if you wanna, hey, tell me what you wanna do. We could just laugh if you wanna. Hey. <laughs> no, but for real though, welcome to Wine Talk with Tesh, guys. I'm super excited this month because we are drinking all sparkling wine all month long. Uh, and I, I, I mean, people always ask me. Um, what my favorite category of wine is or what my favorite wine is. And I never have like a legit answer because I get to taste of, I'm very privileged, right? Uh, being a business owner, I, I get to taste a lot of wine. Um, but my, but my, my answer is always, I will never say no to sparkling wine. Um, and I'm super excited to introduce you guys to this first wine because it kind of changed my opinion about Mexican wine in general. So, um, I, I've tasted, I've tasted wines from Mexico over the years <clears throat> and really haven't had a great experience. 
And uh, Drew, who's going to pop up on the stream here in just a second, uh, he dropped off the sample for me, and I popped it open, and I tasted it, and I was like, yo, this is really good. And then I had a second glass, and, it, you know, of course, it got better and better because, you know, I got more and more faded. But, no, genuinely, the wine was really good. <laughs> Uh, and it really kind of opened up the door for me to be open to tasting more Mexican wine. Uh, and since then, I've tasted quite a few. And I must say, I am quite impressed uh, that I, I feel like they definitely are taking their winemaking uh, and their viticultural practices more seriously uh, in the last couple of years than maybe what I was shown even five years ago. Uh, so uh, for those of you guys who are here. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for getting the box. Uh, first and foremost, make sure that your wines are chilled. Uh, start with the Terra Madi. I haven't even gotten there, Lisa. You're, you're ahead of me. Start with the Terra Madi. Um, or however you want to pronounce it. I don't really care how you pronounce it. Just pop it open and drink it. How do you pronounce it, Drew? Uh, Terra Madi. Tara Madi. I'm Indian, right? Sure. So like, I'm like, oh, there you are. Now you're on the stream on this one too. Uh, so I, I'm Indian. So for me, it's like Tara Madi, uh, which is why, <laughs> which is why Ro was like, stop talking mad mess about my mom, because uh, ma means mom. So anyways, uh, pop open the Tara Madi. Be careful when you pour it. Make sure it's nice and chilled. Uh, not be careful when you pour it, be careful when you pop the cork off because the atmospheric pressure inside of these sparkling wines uh, is enough to give you a black eye. So make sure you keep your hands on top of the cage uh, and, uh, and unwind it, untwist it, and then slowly let that uh, cork pop off. Just give, it, give the bottle a twist while you hold the cage in your hand. Um, and then pour yourself a glass. I'm already ahead of you. I think I'm actually on the last wine because I just had Bidia Tacos and uh, sparkling wine, which was this shit. Uh, those are my professional terms for it. It was a great pairing. I highly recommend it. Uh, pour yourself a glass and we can get started. So, Drew, welcome back, homie. It's good to be here. It's um, good to have you, man. Yeah. Thanks. I, uh, for everyone behind the scenes, you don't know this. I asked Drew like last night, like late last <laughs> night. It was inappropriate. <laughs> I was texting him. I was like, what you doing? Where are you at? Oh, you got it's blown. okay. I, <laughs> it's it's funny because uh, I just I think like everybody right now we're all just feeling like run down in this industry and we're all exhausted and um, it caught up with me last night. So I actually fell asleep at a pretty embarrassing hour. Um, so then when I woke up this morning, I I had uh, a, not a lot, but I had a, I had a fair amount of text messages. And I just was like, and the only one that got me excited was yours. And then I was like, I was like, well, can I, can I text him back at, I think it was like seven in the morning. And I was like, well, he texts me late and he's got kids. I'm going to text him back. Absolutely. So I feel bad for the other person that was on that text message though. So I don't know who that was. They'll be fine. They have kids too. Okay. It, but, was, uh, handsome Dave. it was handsome Dave. It was Dave Siva. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, now I have, I have your fucking number, Siva. You, you're in for it now, son. Uh, <laughs> I love Unsolicited that guy. I have text now. Yeah, I haven't, you know, God, I haven't seen Dave in so long. And, and that's obviously kind of been uh, um, the thing I was, I was in, I was actually in Napa today. So I'm very, I'm very in the culture of wine right now. And um, I saw, I saw one of my accounts and I walk in, he's like, I don't think I've seen you in over a year. And I was like, yeah, it's been weird. Um, so, uh, so it's, it's been, so it's been fun. Uh, but I'm, but I'm happy to be back because I, I love the conversations that we have. And the last time we had a really good one about Georgian wine and, um, and then you've been on my podcast, which is the good bottle podcast, plug, plug, plug. And, um, you were one of my favorite guests cause we got to, uh, it was just, it was a fun opportunity to get to know you a lot better and then get some of your opinions on things. And then I just love what you've been doing with, uh, with, uh, all your wine talks and, and really, I guess, I guess destigmatizing wine for definitely for myself, but then for yeah. just uh, for other people as well. I think, um, I, I come from, I come from more of a spirits background, as you know, and for the people at home, like I, I mean, I can tell you about so, so many things in regards to mezcal and rum and stuff like that, but, but wine, uh, it's really been a learning, 
a learning curve, a steep one for myself. So being able to bounce things off of you, which you know how often that you get text messages from me about wine questions and you're always very responsive, which I appreciate. Um, but this is that's what I'm here for. Yeah. And so I know that you do that for other people too. So I think these are, I think these have been really fun. This is really cool. So, so in a very long winded answer. Yeah, man. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for, I mean, thank you for, for talking up a Mexican wine because we definitely, we definitely get uh, a lot of flack for, for some you of know, it. And to be fair, man, I mean like, okay. So when I tasted them, my first experience with tasting them, I was at the kitchen uh, and it was probably like a good five years ago now. Um, the wines that the dude poured for me, I was just kind of like, man, like they just leave something to be desired. Like they didn't really, they weren't really balanced. They were kind of out of whack. Uh, and I don't even remember, I'm not going to throw out the names of the brands or anything or who the person was, but they really, they didn't really hit home for me. So my experience with, with, with uh, Mexican wines was, was not necessarily a great one uh, until you pour, you brought me this. And when, when I popped this open, I was like, dude, this is fucking good. I think I texted you. I was like, dude, this sparkling wine is fire. Um, it's, it's above and beyond. So uh, thank you for, for being the liaison for not just for me, but for everyone who bought a Tesh box this month. Because I think that, uh, I know I've said this before. You guys know this. I wouldn't be able to do what I do if it wasn't for really good reps out there who do what they do. So uh, real quick, I did not get to make video tacos because I have children and my life is like fast paced. <laughs> so I ended up buying video tacos and that shit was good. It was, I don't know if it's just that video tacos are really good and I just love them. Uh, but the, the sparkling wine did work incredibly well with it. Uh, embarrassing Ralph, that is embarrassing. Uh, who the fuck goes to bed at 630? You're not a child. Come on, Marianne. Yeah, it together. wasn't it. it it definitely wasn't that early, um, you know. Yeah, even, was, I think I texted you like eight thirty nine or something, right? Yeah, I mean, but I got. Yeah, I mean, like would be my, pretty fucking early. Yeah, my three year old stays up later than that, so right, you know, exactly. Uh, <laughs> my kids don't go to bed until seven thirty, man. Come on. <laughs> oh uh, man, that's like a that's like vacation if if my daughter goes to bed at seven thirty. It's like the greatest thing that ever happened to me. So yeah, um, it's a battle every night, right? Like I'm sure it's a battle in your house too. You know? Yeah, and you you were like, we should we should battle too. That's what we should do. That was the decision that you and your wife made. You were like, no, you're like it wasn't this is easy. That we made. No, 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 we did not. No, <laughs> number two was a surprise for those of you out there who did not know. We were not planning on number two, and I was straight up in denial for like a month. Like Danielle was like, uh, I'm pregnant, and I was like, Nah, you just bloated. You're fine. You know, she's like, No, I really think I'm pregnant. I was like, Nah, girl, you're good. Just drink some water. You you know, you'll be okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, like after a month, she was like, "Are we gonna talk about the fact that we're having this kid? Or are you just gonna co keep keep fucking denying it?" And I was like, "Ah, I guess we're gonna talk about it now." All right. Oh my gosh. So yeah, no, that That's was so uh, that was not that was why that was why I got the snip, man. I was like, "I'm not doing this no more." Diana says, "So delicious." My dad is from Querétaro. That's amazing. Um, I'm glad that you're enjoying. I may have exaggerated a little, but not much. Two buzz, hashtag two buzz, two buzz girls here waiting on a taco delivery. That's the move. Okay, so so Drew, once again, thanks again for being on here. So tell us a little bit about Terra Madi and, and the brand, and like like give us a little like quick uh, like history on on the winery itself. So so I'm I'm tremendously unprepared for this because of the late notice and having a full day. Uh, that's my fault that's not your fault <laughs> of, of of full stuff but um but but you know the, it, it's it's it is kind of a cool stuff and there's this rich history so i know the other the other one that you're doing is a spanish wine right yep and um i know that people who started who started this winery actually have a sister winery in spain as well and so they came over and um they found quataro uh um, here and uh, let's see, Diana's telling us how to say it right. Who's Teach it? you how to Get say it. Quarataro. 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 No, stop it. Um, that was the Quartaro. whitest shit I've ever heard. Quataro. I, I mean, I it, it's been a, it's been a long day. I took the long route back from Napa too, and it took a lot out of me. But I'm sorry. But Quataro is great. You, thank it's, you for making time. I appreciate it's, it. It's it's um they they are doing some really cool stuff. I had to, I was fortunate enough to 
to meet the winemaker about a year and a half ago. It was, it was obviously before the shutdown, and um, you know, there's just there's a there's a lot of different stuff that goes goes into it. But they have they have a very interesting microclimate there, and it really it really challenges them to stay on top of the of the grape production and um, just their their process in general. And I know one of the things is um, is uh, tapate which I don't know if that exists yeah. in other regions um, because again, like my, my wine knowledge is just not, not where it needs to be, but it's a, uh, it's a calcium carbonate layer that exists within about a, about a meter down um, That's right. from, from, from the, uh, from the rootstocks. And so that also is something that, you know, there's not a whole lot of water that's going to exist in that. And so it really causes those, those grapes to struggle like even more, which I know is kind of a, kind of a thing that, that people want, but, um, between that and the weather, which they, <laughs> they, uh, they refer to their production method as extreme winemaking, which they I do, think yeah. is, which I think is absolutely hilarious. Cause, cause I don't know about you, it's but extremes you know, of winemaking, <laughs> dude, thank you so much for saying that because that's exactly where my mind is. Like. As a as a thirty three year old, like immediately goes to because we're definitely the X Games generation. Like we grew up with that, and so For anytime sure. I see anytime I see extreme, I'm just like thinking of like this like vintner just like doing an ollie down the down the <laughs> slopes of his uh, of his uh, vineyard. Doing a 720, right in the in the vineyard. <laughs> yeah, man, and it's just it's so funny, and, and and you know, so they do have they they do produce like quite quite a bit of wine. They're sending it all over the world, and. Um, but one of the things that that it seems, you know, just they, I mean, they have like a Malbec, um, they have a cab that that is pretty delicious as well. But they really take a lot of pride in in their sparklings, and they they make some really really good stuff. Um, so this one this one itself is made out of two different types of uh, varietals, which is uh, Macabo and uh, Zellero, which I'm not even that might be Wahalero. I'm not 100 percent sure. It's X A R. There you go, Zarello X. and Macabeo, yeah. So, um, so that's that's what it's made, and then it's uh, it's aged anywhere from eighteen to twenty four months in the cellar, mm -hmm. and then from there, uh, you know, you start to you start to see it out and about. And um, this one, they actually did give the pairing note that you should put it with uh, uh, Ensenada style fish tacos, sushi tapas, or or uh or a soft soft cheese so it's really refreshing it's um i know that one of the places that i have it at here in sacramento is um is cantina alley so if you guys have ever been to cantina um, that's a they great some... placement by the way this wine yeah and they belongs there um and so you know big thanks to to oscar out there who's who's the who's that, that brought dude. it in but they do killer fish tacos. So this is a really, really great pairing um, with their fish tacos out there. And so, yeah, I wish I wish I could do like the same kind of nerdy deep dive that um, that we do with the Georgian stuff. But, uh, you know, the in, in terms of the Mexican wines, I, I don't think that you're too far off base. I think there's a lot of people who have experienced a lot of subpar stuff over the years. Most, most definitely. And, and I know for I know for myself because we this, we do have more than just this within our portfolio, and one of the things that that we get uh, a lot of feedback on is, you know, for for the most part, you have a lot of people who are sourcing grapes and and things like that, and and then throwing their own their brand names, or just having some people make something for them, and then uh, bottle it themselves. And there's like this, it, it just. I guess in the past, I just feel like there was this disconnect between between um, people enjoying the wines and the people producing them and stuff like that. And then the price points were also um, a little aggressive at times for for people. And when we were approached by Back Alley Imports, who we do a lot of uh, work with, and they're like, hey, we have this really, really dope wine. It's called Terramati. And um, it's going to be at an incredible price point, which for us, I mean, it was it's it's almost uh, it's almost half as like our other most affordable Mexican wine. Yeah. And and I can and I can tell you that these ones uh, play so much better. And and I know uh, for myself, the part of that journey as well has been getting more into sparkling wines and in champagnes, because my whole experience with sparkling coming really coming into last year was just, I was not a fan 
And um, I know it bothered you, and I know that it bothered our other buddy, Chris Sinclair, because that was the stance that I decided to take. And um, But that's what happens when you're drinking $5 bottles of wine, right? Like, you, it's hard to judge an entire category off of the $5 For sure. section. Um, so that's so so it's been really fun to kind of that, you know, that category to, is really broad too, Drew. Like, you know what I mean? Like you get you like there you certainly there's some winners in that category. There are, but like mm -hmm. it's such a broad category that it's hard to find like winners. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and it, and it definitely seemed like for for a moment there that you know the only ones that I was liking was these hundred dollar. Uh, you know, champagnes and sparklings. Right. Well, don't we all? And I was just, like, yeah, right. And I was yeah. just like, I was like, I was like, oh no, I'm, I, I'm trying not to be this bougie, but it's not going well for me. It's um, hard. It is hard. And so uh, when we got we got introduced to this one and and a few of the other ones that that I've gotten to try and taste. I mean, it's just like, I don't know. You don't have all this residual sugar that I've gotten on a lot of the other stuff. Like it's just it's it's crisp. Um, I mean, it's definitely uh it's you know it's it's dry it just it i don't know it, it has these layers of comfort i mean and again if we get to sit here and upset the narrative of of wine from mexico you know through through a bottle that i mean what do you have it listed for on your website right now 21 that's yeah i mean come on like it's just it's it's super great the the biggest bummer and i think and i think that uh the reason that we don't see this at a lot of places just yet is we launched this March 12th, 2020. Right. So right. it's terrible. For those keeping, so for those keeping track at home, <laughs> everything shut down like the 17th. So, um, so we had, a, it, it was just such a bummer because we were really, really excited about it. I know back alley was really excited about it. Right. And um, we just got we just got to a you know it was just it was just the worst timing. So so doing something like this and getting it back out there and kind of getting all of us reinterested in it um, is is going to be really fun because this this is a this is good stuff. And and again, like getting into getting into the summer and the hotter months and and all that fun stuff like this will be a really refreshing um, sparkling choice. That's not gonna that's not gonna break the bank for you either, which is really cool. For sure, for sure. For those of you who are curious about, about the name itself, right? So uh, Terra is the Catalan word for earth and Madi is the Atomi word for love. Uh, so the, the whole idea is to be representative of like the loved earth, right? Um, so uh, they also did the, the label itself is pretty cool. I like the, the, the use of the hummingbird, uh, which is a popular cultural icon over there. Um, so yeah. Uh, I, I, what I taste on this wine are things like brioche, pear, like a hint of apple, super easy drinking sparkling wine. What are you guys tasting? I'm curious how many of you guys at home uh, made tacos. So, so let me know in the chat. How many of you guys at home made tacos of any form? Because I'm curious because I've, I've, I had birria tacos for dinner um, with both of these sparkling wines tonight. And I thought that it was just insanely good. Uh, and I think that sparkling wine is one of those categories that we often overlook when we're like, what should I have with dinner? Um, and sparkling wine is a great answer. Uh, you know, specific wines, I think, go better with certain foods than other ones do. Uh, so I'm curious, how many of you guys made tacos? And what are you guys tasting when you taste this this sparkling wine? I'll give you a minute. I'll wait. I want to know. Let, hit us up in the chats because... Uh, cause I want to know, uh, chats is drunken Tesh for chat. Hit us up in the <laughs> chat. Uh, well, let me, let, let me ask you this Tesh. So, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm still working on getting you some, um, some, uh, champagne top uh, stoppers for this thing. And, yeah. And we might, we might have them coming this week. So when you pop a bottle of sparkling champagne or, or, you know, anything of, of this kind of caliber, uh -huh. What what's the time period that you can continue to drink that? I mean, from the time that you open it, I mean, when and, and if you have one of those, like, and if you guys haven't seen a like a sparkling uh, wine topper, like they are heavy duty, and if you don't get a good one, it's 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 just no bueno. Um, yeah. But uh, 
but what what's the time frame like for my open it like how many days can i continue to drink that man you got a couple of days really right but a champagne stopper will certainly help with that i would say like three days tops from the time okay. that you put the champagne stopper back on so everyone everyone already got a at least one champagne stopper i had to because i didn't get the ones from you quite yet drew uh <laughs> I had to like pick him. No, no, no. You're good, man. I appreciate everything you do for me. And I know, I know sometimes I ask for a lot, so I appreciate everything <laughs> you do. So don't, don't take it that way. But, but because I had to like, kind of like pick and choose, like I gave more than one. So like between what I had, <laughs> so everyone has at least one though. So two things about the champagne stopper, right? Uh, be careful when you pop it off the next day. Because if you take when you take off that primary clip, it is it is still pressurized in the bottle, uh, and it and it can pop off. Nora, you should you should have gotten a champagne stopper, uh, and if you didn't, it's probably because I had the thought that you might have uh, been okay finishing these wines. Um, it was confidence. It was confidence in you, Nora. I had, Don't I take it personal. Yeah, I had I had faith in you, Nora. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I, I would say, man, like three days. Like if I'm at home and I pop a bottle of sparkling and I don't finish it and I put the, the, the champagne stopper back on it, uh, three days tops, don't wait any longer. Really the next day, if you can finish it the next day, finish it the next day because that's when it's going to be really fresh and the bubbles are still going to be nice and crisp for you. Okay. All right. Now follow and even, up question. And even, then, and even then, I wouldn't say that like the bubbles are going to be – super crisp like you just popped it there will be noticeable that like this was open yesterday yeah and but yeah. the champagne stopper is going to help okay so, what, so what's now follow-up so, question so now follow-up question is um you know if you're if, if you if you get a couple of these bottles and you're enjoying yourself with a group of people you're eating tacos ceviche all, all the fun stuff you get into summer if someone refers to it as champagne are you letting it slide you know i let it slide um i bet i made it a point okay okay hang on time out <laughs> i do let it slide but when i dropped off all these boxes and uh people were like oh i'm so excited for champagne i did make it a point to let them know because i wanted to set the expectation in their mind that we're not yeah. drinking champagne this month we're drinking sparkling wine from all over the world. So champagne does have to come from Champagne, France. And yes, it is kind of bougie to be like, oh, this is in champagne. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it really is. Um, I, had a, I had an employee who would just like totally call people out at the kitchen. And they would be like, oh, I'll take a, I'll take a glass of champagne. And they'd, actually, they'd be like, actually, it's not champagne. <laughs> it's sparkling wine from the... Napa Valley. And it's like, bro, you don't need to do that. Just fucking pour them the glass of bubbly and let them move on with their life. You know what I mean? I think it's I think it's funny because like the way that um the way that you say that and like the inflection in your voice and the way that you kind of curl your lip, it's right. like it's like it doesn't matter how that message is conveyed to you. That's exactly how you look and sound. So that's how you sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Like you, you sound like an a hole, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. It, I mean, obviously, there's something like it. I, th I think you're right. You, you, you try to set the expectation and stuff like that, but really, it's kind of time and place. And you know, um, I, I deal a lot of that with like spirits and and whatnot because I mean, in, in especially Mexico, like Mexico has the most designations of origins than any other country in the world. So. Right. It's like they do take it very seriously. They're like, they're like, no, you can't call that cheese that, you know, <laughs> like they are those type of people. Sure. Um, but you know, so so I mean you you do see it. Now, now I I saw something the other day, and I think that we've talked about this before, but there yeah. there is a California champagne that exists because of yeah, yes, because of a because of a loophole that they were able to exploit in the designation of order, the AOC. Um, can you do you want to talk about that? I just think it's really interesting and it might be something fun for people to, to hear about it at home. So basically it boils down to this, right? There was uh, uh, it was it's Corbell is one of them. Um, and they um, 
they were basically indoctrinated into it because they had been using the term champagne for so long uh, that they were the exception to the rule when it became a rule that you can't call California sparkling wine um, champagne. So uh, there's a couple of other ones that are in that group um that and they're few and far between but corbell is definitely one of the main ones where like you will see it, it is actually still labeled uh champagne so yeah, yeah. so i mean you know they're, and not one of those things where like i mean personally like for me i know i drink a lot of wine also the price point should kind of tell you right like you're not getting <laughs> i'm just i'm not trying to say like shop price point but i am trying to say right you're probably not drinking champagne that's been imported from France for five dollars a bottle. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, and and there there's a there's another there's another story that that I've that I've heard about about the champagne thing where when when France instilled the the requirements for it and were kind of like in a in a way to um, stifle anybody who maybe have had that grandfather clause into it, like they were calling it before it was established. One yeah. of the things, one of the things that they did was they made it a year requirement where you had to have a consistent champagne year after year, and they positioned it right in the middle of American prohibition, thinking that that would upset all of the right. attempts by Americans to do it. Right. And, and 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 you know, in California, wasn't wasn't hit nearly as bad as some of like the uh, like the East Coast and, and Midwest when it came to prohibition. So there was still a lot of production that was going on out here. And basically, what was happening is some of these companies that that can still call it California Champagne is they were producing vintages, but they weren't releasing it to the public. So right. it was all for their for their self consumption and their and things like that. So they were able to go back and be like, "Oh, you asked for something from nineteen what was it like twenty to to thirty one? Uh, here you go. Here's all the vintages." And that was like their little their little hack to uh, to beat that. Which I think is that was a time when I think you could take a little bit more pride in American ingenuity. Um, now we're just warmongers. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> for sure for sure james i want to know how, how your tacos turned out and then i think diana said for some reason i might not be able to look at the at the previous messages um because I, I can't scroll down for some reason in the chat uh so so alicia what, asked you a question and it was what is the maximum amount of days to have this bottle open in the fridge with the stopper asking for a friend girl drink it within two to three days like you know <laughs> Also, you're my cousin. You're an alcoholic by nature. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, I have faith in you. You'll be fine. Um, it's in your blood. In it your blood. is. It really is, man. I hate saying stuff like that. But, like, dude, <laughs> uh, at a certain point, genetics does does take a place. And then somebody said, uh, I think Diana said she made, like, grilled chicken tacos. That shit sounded bomb. Heather, uh, no comment on your comment. I ain't going to say that shit. Uh Diana also said she likes to say bubbles. You're totally right about the sparkling for pairing with dinner. It gets that soda craving for sure. The sparkling wine is very light compared to a soda or a beer with the tacos. Uh, you know, I, the thing about like the thing about like soda for me, and I, and I do like soda, right? Uh, clearly, if you've hung out with me, you can tell from my physique that I occasionally throw down sodas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, damn it. I'm trying not to, but. Uh, I don't like that sticky feeling it gives you on your teeth. It like that grimy kind of like, you know what I mean? Uh, that sugar just gets, it gets stuck on your teeth and I don't like that feeling. Um, mm -hmm. But I, what I do like about sparkling wine um, is it's very palate cleansing. And especially with this particular one, uh, it, I do I do think that like, you know, when you take a bite of like spicy taco, like Bidia, like I had tonight, um, when you take a sip of the sparkling wine, it really just kind of freshens up your palate. Uh, to be able to, uh, you know, allow you to uh, enjoy your next bite. So, so yeah. Um, so, so one of one of the things that be before you asked me to join this tonight, yeah, mm -hmm. which which, um, okay, I got to sidebar this really quick. I was yeah, gonna sidebar. ask, I was gonna ask you if I could join you on this earlier this week, and then I oh, didn't. Nice. But 
I'm very much so into manifesting things into existence right now. So this is just another example of it was in my head. I said it out loud. I didn't ask you, but then you ended up asking me. Um, but 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 anyways. So 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 going back to earlier this week, and you had you had mentioned that you were going to do the 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 Beria tacos, and I was like, I can't wait to see you try to pull this off. And I don't know I don't know why it might be like the. It, what appears to be the recent explosion of its popularity, right? Right. But they seem like one of those things that you're not supposed to make at home. Like you're you're supposed to get that at a restaurant. Like I remember the first time I saw someone doing like oysters at, at home and I was like, what the fuck is happening right now? Like this is not allowed. Do you have permits for this? And I feel the same way about these tacos. Like you need a big flat iron grill to do it proper, at least in, in my skewed view of reality. And there might be someone who's watching kind of being like, what a moron, which I'm, I'm not going to rule out at all. But um, <laughs> it's right. It's just, it seems like one of those things that like, I, like when you said you were going to do it, I was like, Oh, I know exactly where I'm going to order mine from. I'm right. definitely not going to try to make these. <laughs> yeah, man. I saw, I saw this. Okay. So full disclosure, man, it was a TikTok video. Right. And, and TikTok kind of has me fucked up right now. And I watched this like video, this, and I follow this lady. She's an older Hispanic lady. And I was like, dude, she was like, today we're going to make birria tacos. And she just fucking had me sold that like I could fucking pull this off myself. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And the way my day unraveled, it was like, nah, man, I ain't doing shit. Like I'm not. So I did. I ended up driving up the street to a little spot that I know has birria on the regular. And I fucking yeah. got, I got my birria tacos that way. Oh, uh, that's, so, yes. that's so funny. You're not, you're, you're right not the, thinking that you are right. You're not the, that. you're not the only person who has fallen victim in my life to TikTok recently. And, um, we've talked about it's, this. it's, it's so bad. Like everybody is like, so into this. And then, and then they, and then they tell me, they're like, like, you need to get on TikTok. And I just was like, you just told me how addicted and unhealthy it is for you. And now so you're like, you. also, you're like, you're like, get on there. Like, like, don't do, do it, it like, everybody. I don't. Like I'm I not have... telling you. I'm telling you. I got a problem. I'm saying, fucking learn from watching me. <laughs> don't get on TikTok and watch dumbass videos till two a.m. It ain't doing nothing for your life. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I feel. I feel like the ones that are really that special get sent to me anyways. And um, one hundred percent. You know, and and then also like, uh, do you know? Do you know Russell Martin at Snug? Ah, uh, that sounds familiar. I feel like I tried He's, to okay, so... more. So so he's he's their bar manager and um he shares all of the good TikToks on his Instagram story. So like I feel like I'm I feel like I always cop, you know. So like if you need to if you need to like cut the cord but still get like your fix, he Just might be him. the person to follow. <laughs> yeah. So that way that. you're not that way you're not searching them out. I feel it's, that it's I feel ridiculous. That. Tori, you were right. The recipe should have scared the hell out of you because that recipe was fucking intense. And the one that I sent you, I sent you a second email uh, that didn't have the video in it. Uh, and it was like the half recipe by me. And even that, like, I, even when I was typing it out, I was like, this is fucking intense. Like, that just, yeah, it, it was, a, whatever you made, I'm sure it turned out delicious. But I, I know that you didn't make video and that's okay. You know what I mean? Uh, it's a lot of work. Nick's taco is fucking bomb. For, I love how uh, you can bounce back and forth between like both screens. So for like people at home, like I have like the computer screen here, which is why I'm not always looking at the camera. Right, right. And then so and so like I see one chat thread, and then I looked over here, and I was like, I was like, oh, there's like hella comments on the Instagram, um, but I didn't see them. <laughs> so <laughs> I have. This is a lot. This is a lot of stuff going on right now. It's like a you're lot just of stuff, dude. Man, you got to give the people what they want, though, Drew. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I like I like the thing that you're using or that Jordan set up for you because I bet it wasn't your idea. Um, that it like it puts it it puts it to Facebook and to YouTube, and so it's like it's getting you all these comments. Sorry, what's that, that mean? Was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, no, that wasn't your idea. <laughs> <laughs> Just. He's good at this stuff. He can't hear it, or we he can't talk to him right now, which is a bummer. He's really good at this stuff. No, he's, he's really good at this stuff. He's laughing. He's, he's laughing. He's, he's put it he in the chat. He's incredible but it's like, at this stuff, man. He's he's definitely. I mean, you know, 
I try and take care of him, man, because I want him to know how much I appreciate him because uh, he, I he think does, I, it's a lot of yes. work, bro. It, it is a lot of work. work. And, you know, and, and it's, it's funny that you say that because like, like I had mentioned earlier is, um, is, you know, Chris and I have, have our podcast and, and it's funny because like, once you do a podcast and like, you kind of do it consistently. So we've been going for, you know, almost two years now. And like people start to ask you like, well, how do you do it? And stuff like that. Like we're two years in and we still have no fucking idea. Like there's just things that we occasionally pull off. And then, and then we do have people in our lives like Jordan who, who, who could probably make us infinitely better. But it's like, we also, we mean, cause me and Chris have talked about this. It's like, he's so good at what he does that we wouldn't want to, I guess, insult him to kind of be like, can you help us for like 20 bucks? Like, like that does <laughs> it. <laughs> be such a dick thing to do to like this guy who, who like has, has been putting out content longer than anybody I know. Like he's been doing for stuff sure. forever, like going back to his beer reviews and, and stuff like that. And it's like, it's like, I can't just be like, Hey, you know, that thing that you're really good at, do it for free for me. Like, come on. Right. Like, you know, right. so, so yeah. I, 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 I appreciate the fact that you take care of him. It, it means, it means, it means a lot, right? Like well, you're, you're, you know, you're taking I mean, the time. It was one of those things, man, where like, you know, uh, I asked him, right. Cause he was doing it for free for several months and I appreciate the hell out of him for that. Cause I was and I was like trying to like go out of my way to like get him wine and da, da, da. And I was like, bro, can you just tell me like how much you would charge somebody? And then he told yeah. me how much he would charge like a regular client. And I was like, yeah. I can't afford that. Like I'm a new, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm a new business. I don't even make that much money. Like I can't afford that. <laughs> I was like, but I can do something for you. You know what I mean? And like, yeah, and yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. we hit like the three month mark and I told him to like raise, raise his price a little bit for me. Because yeah. as the business grows, I want him to grow with it. I want him to be a part of this forever. Uh, well, you want, if, you want, I mean, you, you know, not completely at his rates, but like the rates within the rates. For sure, know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want his business the to grow at my rate. The at rates my, within my... the rates. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, okay. So that's how much you're charging. Great. How much are you gonna charge me, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he, he's 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 the he's the man, dude, and I appreciate everything he does. Um, and I, I try to make sure that he feels like he's taken care of too, because uh, he's a part of the, he's a part of my journey. You know what I mean? Um, if you would have asked me six months ago if I'd be selling a couple cases every month consistently, I would have been like, mm, I don't know, you know. Yeah. Um, but here we are. Uh, and it's working and, and people are, are buying in and they're enjoying the wines. Um, somebody said Nick's Taco. Diana said Nick's Taco. Uh, and yes, I love Nick's Taco. But I will say this. Okay, so when I have video tacos, I want the fucking soup. Like, I want to dip yeah. that shit. I want it to dribble down my... Never mind. That was a really bad way to say it. I want it to dribble down my chin. You know what I mean? I, I want I want to be messy with video tacos because I feel like that's what it is, right? Oh, uh, I said it, Drew. Don't fucking laugh, man. Well, are you are you insinuating that someone doesn't give you the 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 liquid with it? Is that what you're about to say? So, so when you order video tacos, right? Or sorry, when you order queso video tacos, you don't mm. always get the soup. From where? So, okay, so Nick's Taco is a good example. Like when you and like even today, right? Like I ordered. Uh, from this this other spot that I got uh, the kit, I so I got video tacos. I got the soup. Great. I ordered uh, queso video tacos from um, for my cousin, and and her order didn't come with the soup. So I think they're just See, like you got video and you got cheese, you're good. And I'm like, bro, you got to get the soup. I think if I think if that happened to me in that situation, because I haven't had it happen, and it's good because if it did, I would burn that place to the ground um right because it's just that's a that's a non-starter for me you don't get to tell me that you're giving me these tacos without that because i was introduced to them at maya's restaurant in sacramento and and danny who runs that place it was so funny he was down in la he saw him for the first time and the girl that he was with at the time they're like they're at this little mexican spot and she's like she's like oh i want to you know, those are so good. Like we should go back down there and get them and stuff like that. 
and he's you know he's he's uh you know a chef as well and he was just like f that i could totally make those and he just like <laughs> just looking at it one time was was able to was able to recreate it and then since then um you know now that he's got a lot, obviously a lot more reps at it um he makes some of the best in in sacramento as far as i'm concerned and like and you do like you get the you get the bowl with it it's not even a cup it's that. just kind of like yeah when you it's go just like a spot and you order like yeah video de sopa right or like yeah and you get the fucking bowl and they just give you a stack of tortillas that's <laughs> shit, bro that's why i can't lose weight because i fucking go to places like that and i'm like oh i can't eat like two of these i gotta eat like the whole fucking stack of tortillas. yeah man it's it's so it's so unfair you know like uh I, I base a lot of my business around what places I like to eat at. So like if your food is whack, I probably don't want to, (laughs) I don't want to, that's just, that just sounds like, like if like, if you're like a, if you're like a difficult customer and your food is whack, like we're not working together. Like that's just how, (laughs) that's how I go about it. Like No man, it's just kind of like, like, there's no reason for me to be here at all. It's like, you know, but, but fortunately I work with a lot of great places that have, great food i mean unfortunately it's done uh, significant damage to my physique um and then when i do do like my uh you know anytime i'm trying to be quote unquote healthier and i'm and i'm on like my programs which i know work for me i'm like i'm like okay i know i'm not going to see this place for like a month because if i go in there you've done great by the way for the record i'm not trying to like you know be weird or anything with you in front of everybody but like you you've done no you've done incredibly well man you've lost a lot of weight you look good you look healthy you know what i mean thank you people don't tell me i look good and i look healthy people say you're dressed nice people say (laughs) man i like your hair (laughs) your hair does look really good right now oh thanks it's very put together um (laughs) So it, it's uh, no, it, it's. I think in our industry, it's it's so tough to to stay in shape, right? Because it's like we oh, are surrounded by drink. good food, and and booze doesn't do you any favors. And then you know, then we get all tuned up together, and you're like, you're like, ugh, like we're, now we're drunk, and now we're gonna go eat everything and and stuff like that. So right. so it is it is tough, but I think at the same time, like you know. We, uh, you know, both of us have small children that we want to hang out with for a lot longer. So that yeah, was a, yeah. that was you a, have to, you have to make efforts, right? You have to try. Yeah. I, I've, and, I've, and I think, yeah. And I, and I think totally it's the, like, it was like, it's like what for, for myself is like, well, what do I make the big sacrifice of, you know, it's like, do I, do I stop with the breads and all the, the crappy food or do I stop with the booze? And that was an easy one. I was like, I'm not going to stop drinking. That's just not, right. I can't do it. Like not only because I have an addictive personality and maybe some issues, but also because it is my job, you know? <laughs> right. No, for real, man. It's like when people, you know, like when you get into sales and like your bosses are like, oh, like I didn't tell you to go drink at every spot. You're like, motherfucker, what you expect me to do? Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah, that, it's, that, it's, it's hard to build that relationship over a glass of water. It you know? really is. It really is, man. Like you can't bond over any, like you have to, you have to make the extra effort to bond yeah. over something when you can't be yeah. like, when your opening line can't be, damn, this drink is good. What'd you put in it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm doing, I think I'm doing too many personal questions for you. Like all of your fans are like, what is going on right now? No, you guys, no, no. I host a podcast. I do interviews. This is, I can't help myself. I like it. This is good. Tori said a while ago, and I missed this. She said, four of us, no leftovers here. Uh, Ashley and Johnny are washing. They're, they're not washing. They're watching. Uh, I've been drinking. I went to a spirits tasting earlier. Don't judge me. Um, <laughs> she said, uh, the bubbly was a touch overwhelmed by the pineapple and the El Pastor tacos. Still really solid though. For sure. I feel that pineapples, pineapples got a really strong flavor, especially if you had to like fresh pineapples and tacos. Um, Ro, Ro said, you two are hilarious. Shit, boo. You know how we do. Um, what else? I like the first bubble. <laughs> Is that a weird thing to say? <laughs> I like Did the that- first you know, so the, bad, man, I can call him Boo. You know what I mean? The Spanish, the Spanish is the second one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so they like yours better. Victory! <laughs> we did it. Fatality. Yeah, that was flawless, baby. Flawless victory. Uh, Suck it, Spanish word. <laughs> Mexico's in the house. 
<laughs> I like the first bubbles better than the second. Not that the second is bad, but all right. Hashtag two buzz girls. Have we opened the second bottle yet? If you haven't, Anna, you're fucking up. I mean, open it. Ralphie just said the Mahdi blanketed his mouth. Yep. Put it in your Checks mouth. Out. Your motherfucking mouth. The Castel Roy just hit him harder. Oh, my. All right. Well, let me talk about the. I'm going to jump into the Castel Roy and I'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, Drew, if you want to stay on, you can. If you want to bounce and go be with your daughter for bedtime, I totally understand, bro. Dude, you're not going to bed for like another three hours, bro. So, all right, cool. I'm, so I'm just trying to get. I'm trying to get my wife to bring me some wine right now, and thus far, it hasn't worked. So, um, uh, <laughs> you like a texter. You're like, oh, can you bring me a glass, please? I did, cause it's like I. So I'm in. I'm in her office, which is amazing, but uh -huh. it doesn't have a wine fridge in it. So, um, ooh, I did. I did hear something today, and I wanted. And I, as I was uh, as I was driving around Napa, and I wanted to throw. I wanted to go this past you because we were just talking about fitness, and it was. Did you know that when you open a bottle of wine, you're actually engaging 14 different muscles? So really, you're working out when you're we're opening wine. So all the time. So that's for everybody. So now when when you're opening wine is part of your fitness. You're welcome, world. <laughs> <laughs> From Drew. <laughs> fitness by Drew. All right. Tori said, hey, two buzz girls. We like the second even better. Hashtag four Marin drunks. I like this fucking group competition that we got going on. We got hashtag two buzz, two buzz girls and hashtag four Marin drunks. Uh, and then uh, Lisa said, we like number two better, too. Okay, here's oh, the thing. Here's losing. the thing, though. Not like, losing. I'm going to tell you guys. I know that uh, I know that very, very often we taste these wines side by side. And sometimes I present them in a way where it's like, uh, which one do you like more? Which one do you like better? Blah, 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 right? But I do want you to remember that, like, these are from – entirely different parts of the world, right? And they hit differently. So my question isn't which one do you like more? My question is, did you like the first one? Did you like the second one? And then what did you like about each one? Because I think that they both have a place in all of our lives because I love them and I want to put them in front of you. But the question is, what did you like about each one? And what did one hit differently that the other didn't quite hit for you? Or what? how did one hit more than the other one, and so on and so forth. So Anna said to you, Tori, you guys are on both different platforms. With Tori, Anna said, hey, hashtag former in drunks, we should hang out, XOXO. And that's the <laughs> last of the information that I'm going to, y'all motherfuckers can text each other. This is 2021. <laughs> send, her, send her a DM, slide into her DMs, Anna. Uh, <laughs> Nora said, I love the first one, mouth blanket. Uh, there you go. I like that. I like that. All right. Let me talk about Castel Roy real quick before I, before we get more, um, more distracted and, and more faded than I already am because I've had a great, long, busy, fun day. Okay. So, um, first things first, let's talk about this. Um, I want to talk about the fact that the bottle doesn't say we're, we're in Spain, but the bottle doesn't say Cava. Okay. So a lot of times I think that people get a Spanish sparkling wine and they automatically think it's going to be Cava. Well, several years ago, uh, some producers in the Penedas region of Spain, in the north northeastern region of Spain, got together and they were like, hey, we want to have a designation for our wines that's a little bit more elevated than just the Cava Dio. And... They went to the European Union and they were like, we need a designation that's a little bit elevated. You know, can we get some that's like Cava Reserva or something like that, right? It, it didn't really work out. Uh, but what they ended up doing is they got a whole new designation called Corpenac. And a very, very small, like less than 10, producers got together and they're like, we're going to relabel our wines as Corpenac because we want people to understand that we went through a little bit of a stricter growing process, a little bit of a stricter, uh, you know, yield growing process, uh, and then winemaking process on top of that. And we want to be able to designate ourselves above just the Cava Dio. And they really wanted to be able to separate themselves 
uh, for purposes of distinction and being able to say our wines are extra special for this reason. So, so yeah. Um, so the first and foremost, you'll notice that the bottle says Corpinat, right? It's not, it's not Cava, it is Corpinat. So there's a distinction there. Um, so this is a family owned project, uh, currently under the helm of Joseph and Marcel, uh, who inherited the property from their father, Marcelino. Um, they, they have roots that go all the way back to the 18th century. I'm not going to get into it, but you should know that the family itself has been doing this for forever. Uh, it wasn't until recently that they left the uh, Cava Dio um, and, and moved into the Corponaut designation, but that was a big thing for them. Um, this wine is made in the traditional method, meaning that you know they take the still wine uh, and then they, the second fermentation occurs in the bottle. Uh, they do riddling of the bottles and make sure that all the yeast goes to the next and the neck and then they disgorge it. Um, another notable thing about this wine is you guys will notice that the label says uh, Brut Nature. Brut Nature simply means that there was no dosage added, so no sugar added uh, to the wine at the end for the final sugar level. So the sugar level that is in the wine at the ending point uh, is what it is like it's what the the grapes made that's all you get and that's what's remaining so they didn't add dosage to increase the level to increase the sweetness so it's crisp it's dry especially compared to the first one a lot of you guys said that you like both of them for different reasons and I love that for those of you who like the second one more you probably don't like uh, you probably don't like sweet wines you probably like them much more dry and much more crisp and that's okay. They both have a place, right? The Terra Madi probably has a little bit more dosage. And we know it does because the second one has none. Um, so for that reason, it's going to be a much more crisp, much more dry. Uh, in terms of tasting notes, if you guys haven't already tasted the second one, uh, you're fucking up. Get your shit together. Start drinking. Um, <laughs> you know. This is a very floral wine to me. It has like a lot of like white flower, like jasmines. Um, you know, there's a little bit of citrus, like lemon zest, green apple. Um, Tori, I'm curious how well the second wine paired with your El Pastor tacos with the pineapples and stuff in it, because I feel like this is dry enough to be able to complement something that was a little bit sweeter on that front. For those of you guys, okay, the first one was an easy summer drinker, and the Spanish wine was a poolside bougie. And I wish we had cheesecake to match it. Tori, I'm going to tell you right now, cheesecake was not the right call for that one. <laughs> for, de for desserts, you want to have something that's sweeter than the dessert itself, generally speaking. Uh, or, or occasionally you can get away with something dry, but I don't know that that would be great with sparkling. I think that it would just make it even more flat. Uh, and less attractive. Uh, and I say that from experience. I'm not trying to like knock on it or anything. I'm just saying that like, you know, your boy has tried a lot of different things. Um, and I don't know that that would necessarily pair greatly. But that being said, I mean, you know, try it and let me know. Go get, get some cheesecake and, and holler at your boy. Let me know. Um, so that's kind of the second one. What do you guys, what do you guys think of the second one? James, Shelby, where the hell are you? You've gone radio silent on me. I don't like it. Ralph, you've gone radio silent on me. Um, Drew, I wish you were able to stop by earlier because I would have loved for you to have tried this second wine uh, because I think you, I think you would have really enjoyed it, even though it's not from your portfolio. Um, Come on, man. You, uh, you know I'm I know like how you are. You're really good about that. You're really good about like <laughs> just exploring and trying shit. You know what I mean? That's what, actually yeah, one I of the things that I, that's one of the things that I love about buying wine from you is that like you're just like you're just into trying dope shit like. You don't yeah. really care. You just want to try good wine. Well, you know, it was it, – it's something that I'm very, very lucky that I get to do that because there was one time where I worked for a company um, that I went to a tasting event, and I ended up – and I posted a picture from it, and I got a ton of shit for it and, like, in trouble. It was crazy, and I just was like – I was like, this is not what this business is about. This, is, this business is about uh, – 
trying new things and being exposed to different stuff because it's like that's a that's just only going to make you better at what you do right and it's going to improve it's going to improve your palate you're going to give you reference points i mean a lot of the stuff that i that i work with is things that people have never had before so if you don't try a bunch of other things like you'll have no comparison points it's like well how the hell am i supposed to how am i supposed to bridge the gap for people who don't know what this stuff is and um and there's also there's like like I have a ton of cool stuff in my portfolio. There is no doubt about it, but there is even more outside of my portfolio because we can't, we simply can't sell everything and everybody has like cool stuff and, you know, and it's given me a good, uh, a good reputation in terms of being someone that, that people trust when it comes to their opinion. I'm not just a shill for my own stuff, you know? It's right. like right, and and like I thank you for recognizing that because you know I mean I, I think that when I was at Classic it was it was the same way, uh, they were super cool about understanding that like yo Tesh is Tesh is a wine guy he's gonna be out he's gonna be tasting and he's gonna try different things he's gonna post about it and they were really cool and I really appreciated that about them because uh, you know dude if you only stay within your portfolio you're only gonna grow so much man yeah. yeah yeah I mean and again it's like you know you yeah you get to you get to try different stuff and and um. Yeah, by the time I finally got home, I, I went to go see if I had any sparkling at all. And all I had was a bunch of Russian stuff. And I can assure you, I did not want to drink that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll probably I'll probably swing by tomorrow or Friday and, and pick up that four pack from you because uh, because I definitely want to get uh, that one plus the other two that that you have. So, um, uh, yeah, no, I, I I'm looking forward to to enjoying that. But, yeah, it's. Yeah, I think I think everybody should just try to drink as much as you can. I mean, that's like the coolest thing about about booze and spirits is the only way that you can really get good at them is by drinking them. And I can tell you, there's a lot worse ways to spend your time. Right. Yeah. I mean, right. I mean, like, like think about it. Right. Like we're educating ourselves, but like we get to drink along the way, and who fucking doesn't yeah. want to do that, right? People always ask me. They're like, I actually met someone random today who was like, she's new to Sacramento. And she was like, you know, how did you get into this? And I was like, well, I mean, you know, when you have the option to turn drinking into a career, it it's very it, like you take that option. You know what I mean? Like, it, yeah, it's, yeah. What other? I mean, for me, it was kind of like a no brainer. Like, if I can live, uh, if I can live my life, not necessarily being rich, but you know, being able to enjoy amazing beverages, um, and and being able to take care of my family at the same time, cool. Like, that's what I want to do. Uh, Ralph yeah. said, I'm here. We got distracted eating flowers. It's exactly how it sounds. I'm curious, bro, because I've <laughs> been to your house recently when I delivered the wines, and I don't remember seeing edible flowers. So I want to know what kind of flowers you're enjoying. And then uh, Ashley and Johnny said the Spanish bubbly with the Al Pastor was 100. Yay, yay. That's my Ice Cube impression. That was all I got. It's a very That's high good. pitched ice cube. <laughs> you gotta let him have his. You gotta let him have his thing. You can't take everything from him. You know. Right. You know. He was this big brown guy. Now you're this big brown guy. You can't be taking his catchphrases too. You're right. You're right. My bad. Uh, <laughs> cool. Well, let me know how you guys like the wines. Um, if not, I will. We will see you guys in two weeks. Drew, thank you for joining. I appreciate your time, man. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Your wife never brought you a glass of wine. I'm really sad for you. She she just texted me right now and with like excitement. To be fair, she's 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 taking on the little one by herself right now. Sure. So who knows what the, what the hell's going on out there? But, but she's bedtime, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she's working at. But no, man, I, I you know I appreciate I appreciate the. Uh, the invite and i think that obviously being friends we have a we have a really good rapport and i always love talking with you and and if and if people are either unlucky or lucky enough to to bear witness to it engage with us like it's always fun like this is awesome man i just think this is another really great way to connect with people in a unique setting so um no thank you this is great you're the best no nah, man i you know I'm, I'm only as good as the wines that you guys put in front of me so uh, so, you know, you guys, you guys do the brunt work. I'm just, the, I consider myself the liaison. Like I'm like the in-between person. I just, you know, connect people to good wines. As corny as that sounds, the tagline <laughs> of, of bridging the gap between good people and good wine. That's, that's what I do. I don't know why I like the second one better, but it just tastes different. And I really like it. All right, Marianne, I see you. You just like, you know, 
made Drew die a little bit inside. But you know, I don't, I don't make any of this shit. I don't care. You already bought it. I won. Right, Bob, it's, it's, shit, man. it's like it's, it's over. Like I've already it's done, it's, man. I got the over. invoice. The wine is gone. Is there's yeah. no returning this shit? It is. Yeah, a, I won. I won. It's this over. This is a win-win like situation. Uh, of course, uh, thank you, Fun Time Story. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for. Uh, for, for joining in on a monthly basis and, and hanging I got out. Some. I'll see you guys in two weeks. You got some wine. Drew got some wine. All right, Heather said, thank you for these new additions. I really enjoyed both. The Castelroy was lovely. Awesome, my friend. I miss you. Let's hang out soon. Uh, I get my second vaccination on Friday. Um, so, you know, let's hang out next week sometime, Heather. I fucking miss you. you you're good people, and I need, your, I need your energy in my life and hopefully vice versa. Uh, Ralph said, Nora says we have edible flowers called nasturtiums. We all know what nasturtiums are. Come on, man. I feel like most people, Drew, you know what nasturtiums are, right? Yeah, totally. You should eat it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They're totally edible. See, every see, Ralph, everyone <laughs> knows what nasturtiums are. Yeah. He also said, but I'm thinking she was wrong because I'm tripping balls. Don't trip balls. Oh, my homie. God. Don't trip balls. Just okay. Do- I, drink some more. I don't, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to steal your thunder here, but I just. I'm like drinking this weird wine now, and this oh. is totally. It, it's totally my wheelhouse to just to just like grab something random and then give us the plug. Give us the plug. What is it? It's from Slovenia, and it's a CV CV Pino. Hold on, I'm trying to think. Where's what camera is hitting what? So there's oh, there's funny. the camera for Facebook, YouTube, and then here's the camera for Instagram. So you guys can both see it. Okay, cool. This is weird. You guys should buy it. Good? I don't know where I, I I don't remember where I got it. Show us your glass. You said you said Pinot. It's a so Civi Pinot. Yeah, it, and then man, usually I can tell. It, this might be from Good Bottle. I don't know. It's got to be. I don't know. I don't know where I got this. <laughs> this is how no that's okay life. that's good that's good and i like i like it i'm like shit where did i get this i so. actually get a lot of comments about that people are like you know uh <laughs> people are like oh you know you wear the good bottle shirt and you know isn't that kind of like your competition and i'm like not really man like good bottles doing their own thing also they're in downtown sac like right next to the mm-hmm. capital and they're my friends man and you know they have liquor they have like an actual shop like you know, well, and they're and they're and they're not offering anybody to be their song, right? Right. Yeah. So, no, it's a whole different shtick, man. You know, yeah. it, it really is. Like, I, you know, when I, th- yeah, like I bring you guys your wine. You know what I mean? It, it's it's a whole different category of, of things. So when people are like, "Oh, you rock their shirt," I'm like, "Well, I love them. They're my friends." You know what I mean? Yeah. Even though Chris tries to like fucking hate on me and everything that I do, it's okay. I still love him. Uh, it's because he's a he's a he's a weak person. So don't don't. <laughs> he's gonna watch this later and be like, "Fuck you guys, man!" No, he's not. He's, he's not, not gonna, gonna put that time he's in. Definitely not gonna watch this. He does no, not unless in, unless somebody says. Um, Nora asks if I carry Ancho Reyes. I don't, but I do have a I do have a bitter that's made that's a Serrano pepper, and oh. you just add you add like a little like you add just a couple drops to anything, and it's just like instant heat but the but the ancho reyes is is delicious the ancho um, reyes is fucking fire she poured me some the other day that shit was fucking incredible did, have you tried the i'm trying to think of there because there's the green one which is the ancho reyes and then there's a red didn't one try the green one okay they're 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 the green and they're that those are those are super super fun um but uh but no i wish i wish i sold it because it is delicious and it and it does it does crush I need so. to figure, I need to start. You know, I, I'm I'm I've got so many ideas on like how I want to move forward as a business, guys. I really just need to like make a decision and pull the trigger on something. But I, I definitely think that like a part of what I do moving forward would be um, inclusive of hard alcohol, uh, because I'm an alcoholic and I want to drink hard alcohol, and I want to connect you guys to those hard. Can alcohol. you can you sell like sochu and stuff like that? Mm-mm. Really? Yeah, wine and sake. Um, yeah. Diana, what are we talking about now? We were talking about Ancho Reyes liqueur. <laughs> we're all over that, the place. Yeah, we're like, Slovenia, 
Slovenian <laughs> wine, Antares. This is friendship, everybody. This, this is, is what we're doing. This is the most realistic what it's like to hang out with me and Drew. You know what I mean? The conversation just kind of goes fucking everywhere. Uh, yeah, no, it, it's, yeah. It, yeah, it's, it's, how about, show? Nora's asking, how about Sotolo? Oh, I'm sure Nora, you have some Sotolo, right? I have Sotoleros, and it is, it is, um, used to be called Colande, uh, and a lot of the producers know Sotoleros. I love Sotol. Sotol is, like, I, I, Sotol is the thing is, like, when you start to think that you understand Mexican spirits, someone's like here's some sotol and it breaks your brain like it's it's like, insane oh, it totally right. is i mean it's like this 100%. it's this rad little desert plant that looks like an agave gets cooked like an agave but is not an agave at all and um it's it's so good like and there's and there there's a pretty steep drop off between like the really good stuff and the stuff that's like horrible um but there's some really really fun stuff out there and, and it's and it's gaining popularity like you're seeing it you're seeing it more and more and it's like really really badass i i love 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 satol and it's because it's so expressive i mean you know when you talk about when you talk about uh like wines and i actually parallel a lot of agave spirits with wines because it's what a lot of people understand because like you know tesh you know that terroir is such a huge driver of of huge everything that happens with like yeah. the within like the flavor profile of wine and stuff like that. And we've talked about that today with like the Mexican expression as well as the Spanish one. And it's the exact same thing in, in agave too, um, which is weird because agave uh, will go through the process or at least with the Sotol or Mezcal or, or tequila is that it does get distilled. So you're, you're, you're changing the, uh, the composition, the chemical composition. So it's almost like terroir shouldn't play a factor, but it still does because I'm just I'm telling you the the ones that I've had from the same producers from different regions and they, they taste they taste completely different and really um, so yeah so Diana just asked like what would you compare what would you compare Satol with and I mean I know how this sounds but there's really nothing out there like it it's so yeah. it's so unique um, and and I've I've given a note before where because uh, I because I think a lot of people here are in the Sacramento region, right? So, um, so we're all very familiar with how freaking hot it gets here. Um, they're so told that I've had where it feels like you're walking down a trail in the middle of July and there's a gust of wind that kicks dirt into your mouth. That's what so told tastes like, but in a good way. So <laughs> it's, it's That's so a good weird. I actually really like that descriptor. Yeah, but That's it's always, it's always different. It. Yeah, it's it's always it's it's really super different, and it's hard to put it into one kind of flavor profile because they can come from Michoacan, they can also come from Durango, and so they're very very different regions. And um, but but overall, they're just they're super fun. I mean, and and again, it's a it's a great thing to expose your palate to because it is so different, and it's um, it's just going to make you appreciate the things that you like even more because now you're going to have more of a uh, more of a uh, she likes the way dirt tastes. You're gonna love Sotol. <laughs> uh, well, she thinks of the Sau the Sau Blanc of Mezcal. That's a good one too. Yeah, that's I mean, again, it. it's yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, vegetal. Um, I mean, I've had some that. I mean, I, I'm I'm hijacking your thing right now. They got me talking about my passion. I gotta. That's good. You're good. I'm gonna Just run with I'm gonna it. go. I'm gonna go back to my Slovenian wine. So. <laughs> No, it's good, man. I like it, dude. And I, and I do like that that comparison, the Sal Blanca Mezcal, grassy, light, delish. Uh, Marianne said, I think the second one smells like brown sugar. Um, I don't know if you're just associating that with me, but thank you. Uh, <laughs> that could be the kid's, she said, that could be the kid's true fingerprints on my wine glass. Not that I'll let them try my wine or anything. <laughs> you know what? If you're not letting your kids try your wine, you're, you're not parenting at full capacity. Agreed. Um, that's one you want I'm, you want your kid you want your kid to grow up with a shitty palate? Come on, step your game up. Right, come on, man. You know, so it's funny, right? So a lot of you guys, everybody here knows my kids, and everybody here knows that Eliza is incredibly social. Both of my children are. Ev is now coming out of his bubble, and he wants to see people. He wants to be a part of them. It takes him a minute to warm up, but he's definitely coming out of his bubble and like, uh, hey, hi, I'm I'm brother, you know, and he wants to like introduce himself and all that fun stuff. But Eliza has always been. Uh, you know, it's no secret, like every night for dinner, I usually have a glass of wine, um, minimum. Um, <laughs> and uh, and so, you know, Eliza will be like, can I try it? For a long time, she was like that. 
until recently, she hasn't really been on that train. She's been kind of like, uh, I don't want to try it. And like now I'm kind of like, just try a little bit, you know? And she's like, okay, dad. Okay. So she'll try it. <laughs> I love how right you're now. peer pressuring your child to drink. I really can am, we just Can we like just summarize that? Like, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, like I have a picture of my daughter, like, like, viciously grabbing a wine glass out of my hand to drink it and, and you're just kind of like, like drink it motherfucker <laughs> yeah would you want you want to be a dork do you do you want to be a dork growing up like you're bullying your child into drinking <laughs> don't be a fucking nerd eliza come on man <laughs> <laughs> that's so terrible it's it really so is no, man, I was just like, hey, you try a sip. You know, you like trying them. I want you to just know what it tastes like. So she tried one uh, two nights ago, and she she hit me with a blah, blah. Oh, I'm no. real dead. And I was like, oh, man, damn. All right, uh, Diana said, thanks, Nora. I like the taste of grass, too. You know the way fresh-cut grass smells. Love, Ev. You're just trying to get Eliza sleepy. You've met Eliza. You, this is not a secret. I mean, you know, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> Anything that I can get to help me get my children into their beds and calm down would be amazing. So the thing is, is that like when you guys come, the, the few of you guys who come to like pick up wines um, after you place your orders online, um, that was a legal discretion. You see what I did there? Uh, <laughs> when you guys, for the few of you guys who come to actually pick up your wines, the thing is, uh, my kids, they're incredibly social creatures. They're, they're very much me. Uh, in that sense. And so they, they feed off of that energy and they need it. So I try not to get mad, but you know, uh, a, a couple of times where like, I've been like, you guys need to stay inside because they're being two psychos. Uh, I don't want you, uh, I don't want you out here. And you know, that's it. Dad, I don't think your wine will pair well with my scotch. I'll try it later. <laughs> it's funny cause it's true, Ralph. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Does anybody have any other questions about either of the wines? Or Mezcal, I guess. Kind of, what did you say? <laughs> or Mezcal. Or Mezcal <laughs> or Scotch or anything. The Sotols. Or Sotol. We can, we're here to answer questions about you know, you, our you, beverages. You know, so, so, you know, I, I, do a lot of, uh, I do a lot of private tastings and in, in stuff like that. And... Um, I uh, I do this new thing where at the end of it, I ask people, I'm like, are there any questions that you have that you've always been too embarrassed to ask? And it can be about anything. Oh, that's right? a great way to put it. But yeah. Booze related, not just in general, booze related. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and I uh, one of my favorite ones was this 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 girl asked, she's like, she's like, it, it, you know, I saw these um, these sticks that you can put into your wine that if you put them in there and you can drink as much wine as you want, you won't get a hangover. And I was like, that is not real. I don't know where you found the dumbest these. fucking thing I've ever oh, heard. Oh, you know what she saw it on? Fucking TikTok. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what it was. She's like, I saw it on TikTok. And I was like, that should be your number one indicator that it's not real or that it would work for that matter. No, that's so. fucking awful, and it's awful that somebody out there is trying to like push that shit, and you know, right? But it's a it's a great it's a great question to ask, um, you know, because I because I know that you do the private events as well, and it and it just it just ends up opening up like a completely different realm of the conversation, which is which is super fun, and I mean again, because and if you you got to think like by the time that you get to the end of your tasting, for the most part, like if you're tasting along with them or like every you know someone's had you know, two bottles of wine or, you know, five ounces of, of mezcal or tequila or whatever, like everybody's more loose. And then now they're kind of ready to talk and loosen up a little bit. So it, uh, it leads to a lot of, a lot of good times. So yeah, I would say, I would say throw that into your repertoire for next time. For sure. For sure. All right, guys, it looks like we don't have any more questions. Uh, I will see you guys in two, two weeks where we will be drinking the Crone Brut Rosé. <laughs> I've been drinking for a while now. We will be drinking the Crone Brut Rosé, and we will also be enjoying the uh, Deviation Road. Uh, uh, yeah. Tesh at a private, private event. Magical. Agreed. Agreed. That's kind of what it's like. It is. It really is. That's when, that's when my wife fell in love with Tesh. 
<laughs> we went to one of his private events and now like he's one of my get out of jail free people. Like if I'm like, I'm like, oh, I was hanging out with Tess. She's like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> so, you know, what's funny, Drew, you're not the only one, man. You're not the yeah. only one, dude. Uh, I got, I got a lot of, I got a lot of boys who uh, are in the same, same boat. Uh, Chris and Claire being one of them. Uh, she'll be like, oh, you're hanging out with Tesh. All right, I'll see you whenever you get home. All right. I used to be, I used to be one of Chris's until he did it too many times, and now I no longer count. Oh, like it's, you now know, I'm out. you took advantage, yeah. man. You gotta, you can't take advantage. You, yeah, you gotta, Jen you gotta was like, Jen mics. was like, I know Drew's tricks. He rambles on, and as you guys, as everyone can see tonight, who has stuck with us through this, all this rambling. I like it though, man. It's good because it feels like much more of a natural conversation, uh, and uh, and you know that's. It, I'd rather I'd rather that like you guys get to experience what it's like to like hang out with somebody who's really into like alcohol, uh, all kinds of alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds really messed up when I say it that way, but you know, truly, right? Like you're, it's not like you're just restricted to whiskey, like you know, and and mezcal. You know a lot about everything. Um, and so, um, yeah, you know, I, I appreciate, I appreciate the energy that, uh, that you bring to these, to these talks. You're hanging out with Tesh. Don't drink too much, says Marianne. All David <laughs> has to do is bring a line home. No. All right. All right, guys. Uh, two weeks, Tesh talk on the 26th. We won't have, uh, Jordan that night unless some kind of miracle happens. Um, be, but so I, I'll kind of be driving all this shit. Uh, it won't be as good. Don't worry. Uh, we're already quite aware of that, but I'll see you guys in two weeks. And if you guys have any questions along the way, also the links, uh, if you liked the, the, either of these wines, if you like the Terra Madi or if you like the Kestel Roy, the links are in the chat, click on it, order more. Um, Yeah. Let me know. Uh, let me know what you guys thought, and if you guys want to order more, there's there's one link. Boom, and then uh, if you scroll back a little bit, you'll see the links for the other ones. Uh, until next time, Drew. Thanks again, and Thank you, uh, we'll see you guys all in two weeks. Cheers, guys. Thanks everyone. Have fun. Drink your all your wine. Cheers. Buy more. Yeah, don't use those champagne stoppers. Come on, make it, make make it last forever. <laughs> She said that she hate me, I hate me too I can always tell when you're lying, girl, you're see-through All these miles away, yeah, I just wanna see you Baby, give me good faith, she hit me like seafood Remember when I saw you, hi, it's nice to meet you Know my old girl's salty, she just wanna be you I'm a dog, no Maltese, I don't wanna leave you Once you're right here, I just don't wanna mistreat you, no Cause I've been a douchebag before, baby girl, I don't wanna repeat she just won't please me, she look in my eyes, told me why are you bleeding And I don't even know how to answer I take these drugs to my bladder She says she noticed a pattern, she say I look gorgeous, I tell her I'm flattered But I hate my reflection, when I look at you all I see is perfection I'm so depressed and I don't know the reason, just wanna feel better Hate my reflection when I look at you, all I see is perfection I'm so depressed and I don't know the reason, just hope I feel better Don't know the reason, just hope I feel better I just hope I feel better You said that you love me, don't know if it's still true Hate it when you're not here, love it when I'm with you You say you don't trust me, all the shit we've been through Why you always upset?